Okay, we're here now and the uh, the rain's cleared out. It's a little bit cooler, got my jacket on, but we've got the winch here in front of us and it's time to have a look inside this one that hasn't been open for a year. Let me stick this guy on my head and let's get into the job. Okay, so you can see I've got all these rags around here on the deck. Primarily these are actually to stop bolts and bearings and anything else from disappearing. Um, you really can't do this kind of job at sea because the concern of things going over the side of the boat. Now we've got a bucket over here where we're going to be putting all the parts that come off again so they can't move. This is going to end up be the bucket that we clean the things in with diesel in it, but I don't have the diesel in there now, otherwise every time I drop something in, I'm going to splash it on the deck. So first look inside, so you get a little bit of corrosion here. This is just underneath the very top part of the winch. This should be the bit that's um, most regularly uh, cleaned off and fresh water gotten into it. Okay, firstly I see this top section here is damaged. Now, if I was to go back in time and look at this job in the year 2000, three or four years after this boat was built, this is a problem, right? But now, as we know, this is a 3D printing job. It looks like someone's tried to glue it there. That does give me some hope that maybe this kind of material is glueable. So, you don't have to worry about that too much now because this bit, yeah. Oh, that's kind of amazing. It actually came off. First look inside here, okay, good. Very, very dry, very dry. Uh, these are a kind of ceramic bearing. These little rods here are made of um, Turalon, is it called? I don't know, put it in the comments below. below. What's this stuff called? I forget now. It's the bounciest material on the planet, particularly when it's in this little ball form and they come off the tracks up on the mast. Uh, this stuff is fantastic. There's ceramic base as far as I know and um, they don't look cracked, they don't look too bad. These don't really need um, uh, too much lubrication. I've been told by some people not to lubricate them at all, but I've got to say when we are working in very very harsh environments where um, the winches can end up like getting frozen, I, I end up coating all of these with grease as we'll see when they go back together, but look, no damage, so super easy. We'll get some work gloves on. Let's get the, these fasteners off here. Okay, gloves on. Allen keys, now you've got to be careful with tools on a boat at all times. You can see one of my Allen keys has gone missing here literally in the last couple days. So if anyone travels around the boat, you see a number six Allen key, please put it in the comments below. Um, we've got these larger outer ones and these smaller inner guys here. I'm just going to give these little guys a bit of a crank first. Yeah, there is a kind of um, mounting plate inside here, which these components are... Um, uh, secured into. We're going to have a lot of cogs, a lot of ratchets, pulls and stuff in here. I'm going to take this apart in such a way that leaves that all inside. So when we take it off, everything will be revealed right at the first second. Okay, and number eight. Now this is where anybody who knows engineering knows. Now I've got a little kind of torque meter in my elbow here and I can lean against this and tell if it's going to crack, if it's going to move or if it just needs a whack. See that feels really solid, doesn't feel spongy, so I'm not thinking it's going to crack. And that nice reassuring click there is when it comes loose. When you've got stainless steel fittings like this on a boat, they're made from 316 stainless steel as opposed to 304 stainless steel that you'd get in stainless steel bolts that you might buy in the hardware store for your house use. 316 is more um, resistant to uh, salt water and so these kind of fasteners will all be made of that but they're going down into um, a magnesium alloy in this case and uh, stainless steel and aluminum and these magnesium alloys it, they do not like each other so hopefully what we'll see as we start to get these bolts out is that they're all coated with a mating compound called Duralac. Okay so Maybe, yeah, see that yellowing down there, that just a little bit down the bottom here? This is Duralac. Now, anybody who works with Duralac knows the lids forever get stuck down. This stuff goes hard over time. But this is a mating compound. I think it's got linseed oil in it. And as it says on the package, it inhibits electrolytic corrosion between dissimilar metals. So all of the bolts that are stainless steel going into aluminum bases, they all need to have that on. So we should see that across the board here. Well, 
I think they have. I think they've got a very little amount of it, but um, they're pretty dry, let's be honest. Okay, let me get these bolts out and let's take a look inside. Okay, so we've got the last of our uh, fasteners out. We can see it's pretty shiny down each one of these holes. Not rusted, that's a good, good sign. I say we're gonna get these um, three bolts off in the center to take this apart. Now, if I was doing this at sea, I'd leave these three bolts on and I'd take all of this off and I'd take it inside the boat immediately so that I didn't have any chance of um, losing parts. All right, so with these three out of here, yeah, definitely got Duralac there. We then should have the opportunity to, yeah, pop this apart. Oh, that's a good sign. It's a sign that good sign is not stuck. Oh, there we go. You see the rags just slowing things down there. Pretty dry, dry like Gandhi's flip flop that lot. Now look, okay, so we've got the central column here is connected with these. Um, What's this? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. No, that can't be right. Two, four, six, eight, nine. What's going on? Uh, eight uh, fasteners here, and we can start to see there's oxidation starting to go on around them. Now, even if I take those out and put Duralac in them, which I'm going to do, this part is extremely difficult to remove. You need a press to get this out, but I still want to make it that these are not sealed in there in such a way that if in the future this does need to be replaced or something gets cracked here, I can't get it apart. So as part of this, I'm going to whip those out, put Duralac in, clean it all up, and then we'll have a good situation. You can see down here, this piece of nylon, this is so heavy things can go down. Now again, these bearings, pretty dry pretty dry and you saw what happened when it came out they'll get stuck up inside the parts as you lift them off hence these rags we've got two here sitting on top and then one of these c clips my dad used to call these jesus clips because when you try and get them off boom, they flip across the workshop with the call of jesus um those two guys look okay now we're going to take this apart uh pretty quickly because i know how these go together but um don't do this yourself if you haven't done this before just every time you take something off take a picture with your phone take a picture with your phone take a picture with the phone if you've got 20 pictures that'll tell the story of how to put it back together again the worst possible crime though is taking all the winches apart i have seen that it's not good <laughs> and it's a bit like uh legos with your kids okay so the first part out is the main drive here which comes down from the top where the winch handle goes and as i say we've got this Jesus clip on it so if you just put your thumb against one side and make sure it moves thumb against one side and push away oh maybe a little bit more there we go it opens up a little space on the back and then you can pop it off all looks good same for the guy at the bottom maybe I'll actually put a rag on my shorts so they don't end up completely trashed my mother used to say that I could get dirty in a uh, surgery I think she's probably right. Now there's a very good chance of sticking the screwdriver in your finger, hence the gloves. When I was younger I never used to wear gloves and I have a lot of scars and skin knuckles from it. Now I'm getting older and wiser or softer or whatever, but it seems to be that uh, have less damage. Yeah, looking good, looking good. So two off and a, and a, a C-clip, two off and a C-clip above and then importantly this guy now these are the ones there's two places in these winches where you'll make mistakes and this is a two-speed winch so although the basic design may differ from what's on your boat it's going to be something like this it will have all of these components if it has two speeds so uh, these rules should apply across the board everything goes in the bucket here don't line it all up <laughs> yeah because if someone kicks it up to one side or the boat rolls that's the end of that joy these little plastic plates there's going to be one here there's going to be uh, one underneath here, one underneath here, and one underneath here, okay? And one on the top, so we should. Let's start from here. Come on, buddy. Come on. Oh, I think we found a bit that's stuck. Oh, uh, okay, here we go. It's not quite as easy as we thought. Let's start with this guy then. Okay, so first plastic ring and the bearing that goes underneath the main shaft. Can we get it out yet? Can't get out quite yet. Let's just leave that there for a second. This is going to be a problem, hey? Well, okay, I guess this is where we start to show skills, right? So this carriage, as we said, is meant to be on the underside of that unit over there. Now I've left it in here 
because I wanted to show you stuff as it came apart, but we're gonna have to move our plan a little bit because this guy here is stuck. So first things first, if anything's stuck, get some penetrant in it. This is WD-40 penetrant, but it could be anything, sea foam or um, liquid wrench or whatever it is you like. That often can help. And if you're dealing with something uh, that needs kinetic, you need to have something that's soft when you're hitting stuff like this, particularly when there's magnesium or aluminum and uh, alloys in place, but you need something that's got weight. So this is a lead shot hammer. This is what gives you the kinetic to be able to hit things. Uh, how are we gonna do this? Don't think for a second that there's like some preordained way of doing this. We have to make sure that this doesn't drive itself down into the bottom of the uh, winch, but that should hold up against there. Now we really need something that's about the same size as the, uh, what have we got? Well, I tell you, oh, here we go, Allen key, that's a good idea. We need something that's about the same size as that. We don't wanna shove this into here. They're very unlikely the screwdriver is gonna make any impact at all on this um, steel uh, um, pillar here, but we don't wanna shove it in there and then it starts to slightly expand it, like peen it out, and then we can't get it out. Okay, so let's see if we can just tappy tappy Oh, there we go. Everybody's still friends, look at that. Come on, buddy, there we go. All right. So with that up against there, there was an opportunity for the central part to get pushed through, right? That was what I was going for. Okay, let's try and keep everything as it was when we started this little shindig, within basic reason anyway. I want to try, <laughs> I'm trying to do too many things at once. All right, let's try and remember where everything was. Okay, so this guy was here. This guy was under here. And again, in, in the effort to try and show how all of this actually was, I'll try and rebuild it slightly so we can take it apart in, in order. Okay, so this guy was here with his little plastic washer underneath. Sitting on here, doo, doo, doo. this guy was here, this guy was here. Oh look mummy, I remade it. Okay, so this is the bottom of the central drive shaft and it's got this plastic ring underneath it. This has got inside it two poles, okay? We have to check the poles and make sure they're not cracked and that the springs are in good position, uh, which they are undamaged. Okay, but there's something here which is a nice little detail we can check out. This part here, this little bronze bush, or bushing rather, is the same as this guy here, okay? So this cog would appear to be able to go onto here like this or like this, but there is a difference, and the difference is that little collar there. That little collar needs to be at the top. This winch is designed for these two to be top and bottom, and that collar to be at the top. And if you make a mistake and put it back in with it the other way around, obviously with the bushings in place as well, with this one below and this one above, it will look right, but then when you tighten this onto that component, it won't move at all. If you ever put this back together and it won't turn, immediately stop, something's wrong. So, two bushings, good, good uh, condition. This all looks good. It's, it's got a very light coating of grease, not that you can see it against my gloves, but uh, it's, it's, uh, you know, it's undamaged, which is the main thing really for us. Okay, so all those in the bucket. Next one, now we know this guy's free. There's his plastic uh, little bush at the bottom, okay? That's just to allow everything to go around and not damage the components underneath. Okay, and then the last part of this, oh, with another set of poles. Well, then I really don't know how this works. <laughs> There's a set of poles over there, there's a set of poles here, the set of, there's three sets of poles and there's two speeds. Okay, anybody understand exactly how this all works? I'd be very, very interested to find out more myself. Okay, so little disc at the bottom, there he goes, into that, there, don't fly off. I get too casual chatting and uh, forget to be cautious. All looks good in there. Now I could take these apart, but I can see the Duralac around the edges of them. They're securely in there. Nothing requires any servicing, so it's gonna get a good flush through with diesel. And then to be honest, it's going back together again. Now we know that these are all good, everything's working. We can come back and do details later, but for now we're just trying to get ready to cross an ocean and sort out an old long-standing problem. So I'm very happy that uh, that's happening, but I'm not gonna get too in depth with things if they don't really need it. Okay, so last bit here, out comes the pillar. Yeah, it looks good. That one doesn't come out, but there should be three of these inside. One, two, three. Yep, all good there. 
And then there's that bearing, finally get that out. And there's the underside of this unit. So had we not taken that off to begin with to try to show what's going on here, then this would have ended up with this bit on here. We would have taken it out of here like this. Everything would be in here. And to be honest, if I had to do this at sea, I'd take it straight inside the boat. I wouldn't be messing around with it like this. So I'm gonna give this a clean out and then we'll get everything washed off with diesel and water and uh, soap and then we'll get it back in here. I just had to show you this guy maneuvering this uh, vessel. Like it might be noisy, but it's balletic. He's too cool to give us a wave. It's probably also so bored doing that, they just <laughs> He's just not interested in any kind of comment we have to make. We're starting to lose the light now and uh, this process is going to take another 25 or 30 minutes to put everything back together again. And I want to show you through the steps. So I'm going to leave this for now and we'll finish this in the next video. But I thought to finish this one off, I could show you something which um, <laughs> has been creating some confusion for me. Now, the boat has got a uh, 12 volt on board, which deals with all of the um, instruments. Because it's a commercial boat, it's got 24 volts. So things like this are 24 volts but also it has 220 volts. It's a European based boat. So it has a 220 volt inverter converting the 12 volt batteries wired in series and in parallel to make 24 volts. It converts that 24 volts into 220. This is nothing too confusing for anybody who has a boat, right? It's made by MasterVolt, brilliant brand. And the indicator panel looks like this presently. <laughs> this is the um, disco setting. So we can actually look at the inverter, it's in here. It looks a little bit happier. You can see there it's got uh, these three lights on and then a green and a red. <clears throat> but something is not right. Now something's not been right with this unit for a little while. It's not been producing 220 volts, but the uh, disco lights on the remote is totally new. So I'm gonna try and get into that if I can. I understand with those that uh, it needs to be programmed to understand which batteries are connected to it and I'm wondering if the previous owner has told it what kind of batteries are on it now because certainly the code lights which are being indicated on the main unit the one inside those lights say that it's detecting low battery voltage the stuff that's flickering on the outside I think that's probably just moisture but uh, we'll get into that a little bit I do understand also if it's not that programming issue there's a circuit board in there that needs to be taken out and sent to Germany. So we'll investigate a little bit together. I'll show you my problem solving method for dealing with this kind of an issue. I am not the guy to take that apart. My ability to deal with electronics is based on how big is the emergency and um, will my electrical screwdriver fix it. Uh, other than that, I'm just uh, eating biscuits and looking while somebody else does it. So a very beautiful, evening here in Southampton. I'll wish you goodbye and if you've got anything beneficial out of this, if there's something here which is making life on board your boat more enjoyable, please go down below and click the like button and subscribe if you haven't already. Only about 50% of the people that watch these videos are subscribed to a very small channel. It'd be great to show the algorithm that people are interested in this kind of stuff and do want to view more of it and if you want to learn more go over to Patreon forward slash the mariner as a few people have done just in the last couple of days and there's a seamanship videos and i just put a blog out there today which is all about why waterproof expensive clothing gore-tex and gill o2 plus stuff why you end up wet inside it and why it's not the garment's fault so check that out at patreon.com until the next one cheers <laughs>